Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins and rose again the third day. My name is Brother Ed and I'd like to welcome you to KJV Bible Scope and we are doing a devotion on the truth of God. We're dealing with logic, with reasoning, with truth itself and we're saying that truth conforms to the mind of God. And when you deal with the very principle of truth, it covers every facet of your life. So when, when we're dealing with the claim of truth, uh, this is pretty serious. This is a serious claim. Um, by no means uh, should you take this lightly of what we're talking about when we're dealing with truth because every day you appeal to truth. And every day when you appeal to truth, you're appealing to this truth that conforms to the mind of God in anything you do every day in your life. Some people give God the glory for what God has revealed to them concerning truth, and some people neglect it and hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now, that's a Romans 1 claim there, okay? So, today, uh, we're going to kind of shift gears. We're going to be dealing with infinite regress. That's what we're going to be dealing with uh, at the very beginning, and then we're going to move on to axioms, and then we're going to move on to circular reasoning, uh, the two kinds of of circular reasoning that you can have uh, concerning your reasoning, okay? Now, let's start off with the infinite regress. Now, when we're dealing in truth and logic, we're dealing with, you know, even when you're dealing with logic, you have to appeal to logic through your senses to be able to even use logic, okay? Now, when we're dealing with knowing everything, like we mentioned in the prior broadcast, uh, for you to know something, you'd have to know everything. And that even includes a logical claim, uh, a truth claim, a knowledge claim. You would have to know everything about that specific item or object, and you would have to have infinite knowledge of the universe to be able to know s for certain something about that item you're talking about. The problem is none of us have that knowledge. None of us have all knowledge. So what we're dealing with the infinite regress is that very, uh, is that very thing we're talking about. So we have, so, so let's just say this. I ask you the question, how do you know? So let's, let's go ahead and ask the question. How do you know A? How, how do you know A? Well, you'd say because of B, right? So I know A because of B. But then, but then I ask you, how do you know B? Well, it just keeps going because of C. And then I say, how do you know C because of D? How do you know D because of E? How do you know E because of F? How do you know F because of G? How do you know G because of H? And you would think it would stop at Z, but it doesn't stop at Z. It's an infinite regress. See, you'll never get to the end. You'll never get to the end. You'd have to know everything. You'd have to have infinite knowledge. And this is what we call the infinite regress. Now, philosophers have been debating for years and years and years and decades and decades and for centuries about this infinite regress. And they have an issue. They can't know A because in order to know A, they would have to know everything about A universally. But nobody knows everything about A universally, right? Because in order for you to know A, you'd have to know everything. You have to have, we said you have to have infinite knowledge. Now I need you to understand this, this is the infinite regress. So here's how it goes. So when you place it in a proposition, here's how we would say it. In order to know something, you'd have to know everything because something you don't know could contradict something you do know. Now, does that make clear sense when we start talking about that now? Now, you remember in the prior broadcast, we were mentioning that. And now you get to actually see it in a diagram in a format here. So for you to know something, you'd have to know everything because something you don't know could contradict something you do know. Now, 
the problem with this, now let's go ahead and destroy some of these right here. And because you get the you get the idea here about um, you know A B C D E F and it doesn't it just keeps going infinitely. So let's just say it doesn't stop at Z, it goes infinitely, right? So it's it's an infinite. We'll just put infinite right there, it's just so you understand. Okay? So you gotta know all that to know something. And people say, well, now that you put it that way, now I understand it. Now I know that I, I would have to know everything to know something, but it's ridiculous. Why? Because you do know things. You do know things every day, right? So this is gonna be the problem, all right? So we can have a little, maybe a little light bulb or some sunshine here, right? A little light bulb. You do know things. When I'm giving this infinite regress, I'm not saying you don't know things. I'm showing you the problem of the unbeliever stance. The problem of philosophy in an unbeliever circle. The problem of atheists and agnostics. The problem of the general unbeliever. They have this issue here. And they can't get out of it. It, it is an infinite regress. So, the, so this is why it's such a problem. Because they have this infinite regress, but every day they know things. That's a problem, isn't it? Well, not for the Christian. So, this, now, now look. This is for the unbeliever. So just write unbeliever there, right? They are stuck in this contradiction, right? They, they can't know anything, but yet every day they know things. It's a contradiction, right? So let's write, let's write it right here. Contradiction. So we got a contradiction within an unbeliever's worldview. So they know things, but yet they say they can't know things. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Now watch this. Let's go on this side. Now, we're gonna put the same thing here. I, I, I'm doing it this way in uniform just so you don't get confused. I, I want there to be understanding so I'm going fairly slow, okay? Now, I'm gonna take my time on some of these things that I don't really think I need to write down, but I'm doing it to help you to understand this better, okay? Now, I can fly through this stuff, but a lot of people can't keep up. So, I'm trying to slow down so you can keep up, all right? So, if you already got it, praise the Lord. But if for, this is for those that don't get the understanding that quickly, okay? So, we do know things. See, I can know now, now remember, that's the unbeliever, and we're going to say this is the believer, but not any believer, the believer in the one true God, right? The Lord Jesus Christ, right? He's the true God and eternal life, 1 John 5, 20. So we're, this, is what we're, this is the believer in the one true God, Lord Jesus Christ. So we do know things every day. Now, we don't look at this chart the same way the unbelievers look at the chart. See, think about this. We know things every day, right? Can things that we don't know contradict the things we do know? I'd say in a sense they can, but let, first let's justify how we don't fall into the same boat as these unbelievers that know things, but yet they contradict themselves and say they can't know anything. Here's how, you ready? Now watch this. Now let's let's put it, let's put it right here. God. Okay. Now God reveals things to me in such a way that I can know them for certain. So it, it kind of works like this for the for the believer. Let's not even draw a line to this schematic on this side, okay? Let's do this. 
Look how different this would be. How do I know A? You ready? I know A, watch this. God reveals things to me that I can know A. You see that? God reveals things to me that I can know A, so I don't need to know B, C, D, E, F. Let's put infinite down there too, right? That'd be infinite knowledge. So I don't need to have infinite knowledge, do I? I just let God reveal things to me in such a way I can know them for certain. So there are aspects in the mind where you can ask, well, how do you know A? Because of B. How do you know B? Because of C. And, and you can say, well, I can make it all the way down to D, but then I can't know anything past that. But I can know D for certain because God has revealed things to me. See, God has revealed things to me in such a way that I can know D. And I can keep doing that with E. I can keep doing that with F and I can keep going down the line. And then there may, there may be a time when I get to Z that I may not know. See, I don't know Z. See, I don't know what Z is. So we're not saying that God gives us absolute knowledge of everything, but I'm saying that there are things in this world that God gives us knowledge about. See that? He gives us knowledge about those things. And we can know those things for certain. So we're not saying that we have, you know, an, an, an infinite mind. We're saying God has an infinite mind and he reveals things to us in such a way we can know them for certain. So the, the revelation of God, we're not talking about the book of Revelation or things like that. We're talking about uh, truth, knowledge that God has, has manifested within every human being. The framework for understanding the world and how it works on a general level, not on an absolute level, on a general level. But then in that general level of knowledge, we do know things absolutely. There are certain things we know absolutely. I can know I love my wife. I, I mean, these are, these are more conceptual things, but we can know these things. I can know that I, I have a camera on a tripod right in front of me. I can know that. And I know that for certain. Okay, so there are things that we know for certain. So the Christian worldview doesn't give up on certainty. The Christian worldview doesn't give up on knowledge, on truth, on science. So my claim is you can't even get those things off of the ground unless you start with God. Okay, so that's that's the contention right there. And you can see how powerful it is. So that's the infinite regress. Now, let's let's do this. Let me erase all this. Now, what I want to explain now is the axiom. Because uh, remember, we, we did it before. You know, how do you know A because of B? How do you know B because of C? How do you know C because of D? How do you know D because of E? And then what the, a lot of philosophers, you know, atheistic philosophers, and um, I'm trying to think of, of, of the name, um, a lot of, scientists and, and, and people to that effect, um, what they'll do is they'll try to see if they can figure out this infinite regress according to their worldview. So they'll say, they'll try to find a way to justify rational reasoning, to justify science, to justify, you know, true statements and knowledge claims. So here's the idea. So in order to know A, you got to know B. In order to know B, you got to know C, C, D, and it keeps going. And you would say, well, wait a minute. Doesn't, it's got to come to a point where you hit that problem again with the infinite regress, right? Well, here's what they try to do. They try to put a stop to it by this right here. And this is what we call bedrock. They say, well, there's a stopping point where I can finally say that I know what A is. It, it, it's not the fact that they solved the infinite regress, but that they're making some kind of a claim right here that puts a stop to the infinite regress, meaning they don't have to have all knowledge. You say, well, how do they do it? Now, now watch this, this is tricky. You have to assume 
you have to assume that your reasoning is provisionally uh, coming outside of the lines there provisionally valid <laughs> you guys see that so you have to assume that your reasoning is provisionally valid now this is how they try to get out of it that that they don't have to have infinite knowledge right here's how so they don't have to have infinite knowledge. I don't want you to get confused. This is a false assumption. This I'm giving you a false assumption of what they try to do to conquer the infinite regress. And it, it, it's not logical. It's not rational. Okay? But here's what they try to do. They try to say, well, we, we're going we're gonna to get out of the infinite regress. And this is how we're going to do it. There's bedrock. There, there, there comes a time when you peel away all the layers and, and something is just because it is. Now, think about that statement. Something is because it is. Is that not circular reasoning? You're going to have people at a university, people at a university use this argument to justify their, their logic and their reasoning. They say it is because it is. And they don't allow you because here's the question you need to ask them. So if I say God is because he is, you know, God says, I am that I am. So you'll be okay with that. It's fine. You know, logical fallacy and circular reasoning is okay with you. Now, I'm not saying when God says I am that I am, that's a logical fallacy. And I'm going to explain that in a minute when we get deeper into axioms. But here's what they got to do. I ask you, how do you know it is that it is what it is, right? How do you know this? So you're, you're here, right? If you're an unbeliever, we'll just put uh, L for lost man, okay? So in your, you have to use knowledge. We'll put K for knowledge. You have to use knowledge when looking at anything, including making statements and things that are conceptual. You still have to employ your reasoning, right? So, so these are your senses, right? But in your senses, and, and to get through to your knowledge, and for, to, for you to understand that knowledge, you have to employ what? Here it is. You have to employ your reasoning. You can't escape it. If whatever you're looking at through your senses, whether it's a statement, it's going into your mind as knowledge. You got to think about what you're going to say before you say it. It's knowledge. And in order to interpret that knowledge, you have to go to your reason. Even when speaking words, you've got to employ your reasoning. Even when hearing what other people are saying, you've got to employ your reasoning. So you have a lost person. He's using his senses and he's saying, well, I'm going to say this through the knowledge of my mind. It is what it is. So he has to use his reason, right? So for him to say it is, it is what it is, he's using a logical fallacy of circular reasoning two ways. One, he says it is that it is. And when I ask him, how do you know it is what it is? Don't you have to employ your knowledge when coming up with that thought? He says, yes. I say, so in your knowledge, do you have to employ your reasoning? To reason it out. He says yes. I say how do you validate your reasoning? How do you validate? So he validates his reasoning. With his reasoning. Right? Now isn't that. Isn't that viciously circular as well? So you got. You got two circles there. He's reasoning. And the justification for his reasoning. Is his reasoning. And then when he's reasoning this thing out of what he's claiming about axioms and bedrock, he's saying it is what it is. You know what we call this? If, if you're not catching on, okay, you, you, you ought to be snickering right now. You ought to be kind of laughing. It, it's kind of, it's, I'm not saying mock people, but I'm saying it's pretty funny because these people are claiming the standard of absolute uh, reasoning and logic and science and, and you're just all about this blind faith. And, and, as, and as we're rooting out all of the problems in their reasoning, you can see that they have nothing to stand on, 
Now, now watch this. This is what we call invalid reasoning. Now, when I say invalid reasoning, I'm saying that it truly is invalid reasoning. That's why the Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Because it, they have invalid reasoning. They're not giving God the glory for their reasoning. They're not giving God the glory for their knowledge. For every claim they make out of their mouths, they're not giving God the glory for it. So what happens? Your worldview is left to absurdity. And that's what we said. Now, I'm showing you different ways how, you, how we come down to this, but you can't escape the infinite regress. That's why they can't know anything. And then when we get down to the axioms right here, as we're trying to solve right here, now, now, now let's go ahead and dive into this a little bit more. So if you did want to assume this, what we call a theory, if you want to assume that theory, then you got a, a number of, of gymnastics you got to do concerning your reason. Now, number one, you have to assume that your reasoning is provisionally valid. Now, that doesn't get you out of circular reasoning. It doesn't at all. Now, why? Because let me ask you the question. What is an assumption? What is an assumption? Assumptions are propositions made by, you ready? By blind faith. Wow. So wait a minute. You can't know your assumptions because they're made by blind faith. Are, are they not? Look, the proposition is made by blind faith. That's what an assumption is. It's pretty sad, isn't it? And you're going to tell me that's how you get to bedrock? That's how you can actually know that you can know A? You can't know A. You say, well, well I got out of it. Because I can assume that my reasoning is provisionally valid. But wait a minute. When I ask you, how do you validate your reasoning? How do you validate your reasoning? And you validate your reasoning with your reasoning. So my question to you is, if you have no plumb line to truth, what are you left with? You're left with interesting, isn't it? If you have no plumb line of truth, where do you get truth? Truth isn't arbitrary. Truth isn't meaningless. Where do you get truth? Truth isn't relative. Where do you get truth? You only get truth from God. Now, another question. How do you utilize truth? How do you utilize it? You ready? In your mind. Let me ask you another question. How do you utilize logic? In your mind, right? How do you utilize knowledge? In your mind, right? Are you guys getting where we're going? Now, when we're dealing with knowledge, logic, knowledge, logic, and truth, and we're dealing with absolute truth, which none of us appeal to, uh, I mean, uh, concerning our own reasoning, none of us have absolute truth in everything we do every day in our lives. But in order for us to be able to account for truth, somebody has to be the plumb line that has the absolute standard of truth. Now, when we think of knowledge, I don't have all knowledge, but certainly we have to appeal to somebody. Not something, somebody that has all knowledge, that, had, that, that, that has that mind to be able for us to conform to that when we're dealing with our reasoning. Well, who has a universal, unchanging, immaterial mind to be able to deal with truth and knowledge? It's God. And same thing with logic. What do you have to, to have to utilize logic? It's immaterial, it's unchanging, and it's universal. And who has a mind like that? Not you, not me. It's God. So there it is. I mean, you have, you're appealing to God every time you appeal to truth. You're appealing to God every time you appeal to knowledge. You're appealing to God every time you appeal to logic and reasoning, including your own senses and, and, and your sensory faculties. You're appealing to God. All right. So we're trying to understand this bedrock right here. Now, let's give a few more 
refutes for that. Because somebody's going to argue with you that, and they're going to tell you, well, I just assume, I talked to a guy at the university, uh, you know, this past uh, Monday, and he was telling me, well, I know I justify my reasoning with my reasoning, but I have to assume that my reasoning is valid. So he has to make a blind assumption. Now, watch how powerful this argument is. Now, I'm going to erase some of this so we don't get confused. Let's just erase the whole thing, and I'm just going to redraw this so you understand. Now, he says that, here's the lost person. He says that, and you know, let's just draw me. I'm standing right there in front of him. We'll put C for Christian. And he points to, let's just, let's just do it right here. He points to a trash can. So he's pointing to this trash can, and he says, I know, he says, I, I can assume uh, my, my reasoning to be valid, um, and that's how I validate that there's a trash can right in front of me. And so I asked him, I say, well, when looking, see, he's looking, look, when, I said, when looking at that trash can, do you have to employ your senses, right? Your senses, which is right there. You have to employ your senses, right? Now, in order to determine what your senses are telling you, do you have to employ your reasoning to be able to understand what your senses are telling you? And you'd have to say yes. So I ask you, how do you validate that reasoning about seeing this trash can right here? How do you validate your reasoning? You know how he does it? He says, out of his mouth, he says, I assume my reasoning is valid. Okay? He assumes that his reasoning is valid. Now, watch how powerful the argument is. Now, I tell him, because I got a smile on my face, because I know he can't do it. He can't. But look, here's what I ask him. He says, I assume my reasoning is valid. That's how I know there's a trash can over here. So I ask him, do you have to, let, let me write it down. Just so, so you guys can see it. Sometimes visual is good. So I ask him, do you have to use your reasoning When assuming your reasoning is valid. You guys see that? Now that's a question I'm asking him. Look, that's my question. So when I ask him, how do you validate anything? And I, and I tell him, well, you have to employ your reasoning when judging anything in this world. Anything. doesn't matter what it is. They can, you can ask them any question. And they're going to have to use their reasoning when dealing with whatever, whatever they're dealing with, right? So then when I ask him, how do you know your reasoning is valid? And then he makes this broad statement right here about assuming that his reasoning is valid. Watch, watch how powerful that is. Do you have to use your reasoning when assuming your reasoning is valid? So guess what that means? Even in this assumption right here, it's dealing in a logical fallacy. Of circular reasoning. Which leads you. Which leads you where? Does it lead you in rationality? Or does it lead you in irrationality? Because a logical fallacy, especially dealing with circular reasoning, being the basis of your reasoning certainly leaves you in irrationality. You're irrational. See that? Logical fallacy. You, when you assume your reasoning is valid, it's a logical fallacy of circular reasoning. Guys, there's no way out of it. There's no way out of it. If, you're, if you are an unbeliever, notice how broad that would have to be when I say unbeliever. That could be a Mormon, a Jehovah Witness, 
That could be a, 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 a Buddhist. It could be a, a Muslim. It could be an atheist. It could be an agnostic. If you're an unbeliever and you don't start with the one true God to validate your reasoning, you're left in the logical fallacy of circular reasoning every single time. See, the Christian, the Christian, when he reasons, he starts with God. And God reveals things to him in such a way he can know that for certain, the, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So when the Christian, he starts with God, guess what? He can make knowledge claims and he can ask questions. And he can find answers and know things to be absolutely true. You see that? See, we, we don't fall into this logical fallacy. See, this logical fallacy doesn't even exist for the Christian. Because right away, what does the atheist ask? What does the agnostic ask? He says, don't you do the same thing? Don't you do the same thing with your reasoning that I do? And the now, now watch how powerful this is. Let me erase this. Let me erase all this. I want to show you how powerful this is when this guy asks this question. So remember, just remember what we just went through. Because uh, you, you can't just start in the middle if you just pop on the broadcast in the middle of it. You see, there's not, nothing's going to make sense. You've got, you've got to have the whole thing, okay? So... So here, here's our lost person, and here's our saved person. Now, now, now watch this. I'm going to do this slow so you understand. Because sometimes I go fast, and people are like, I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. Now watch. I, I'm telling him when he says, I assume my reasoning to be valid. And I say, but you have to use your reasoning when, when assuming your reasoning. So you're justifying your reasoning with your reasoning, even about reasoning validly. So you can't even know your reasoning validly. That's how, that's how powerful the argument is. Now, look, now he's going to say, you do the same thing, right? Now, if you be keeping up with the broadcasts, you'll know that we don't do the same thing as Christians, right? But now watch, watch the many arguments you could give him. Um, there's so many avenues to travel on when he tells you that. Number one, so let, let, let's give the first one. Let's just say, in order, here, let, let's, man, I, there's so many ways you can say this. Um, let's, uh, I'll do this one. In order In order to know that, you have to start with God. Okay, that's number one, right? That's number one. In order to know what he's saying, he has to start with God because he can't validate his reason. He's trying to say you do the same thing, but he can't know that. Because he, he didn't validate his reasoning, so he can't know anything to be true. So even when you make a truth claim back to him, he can't know it, right? So in order to know, it, to, to know that, you have to start with God. Number two, um, out, out of us two, I mean, you could say it different ways. Out, out of us two, out of you and me, I'm, I'm the only one. that could know the answer to your question. Because I have a justification for my knowledge. So that's, you know, I'm not gonna say that's two, it's kind of dealing with the same idea right there. But, but there, there's so many ways you can answer this. Look, he says, well, you do the same thing. Well, look, if you can't know anything, I mean, there's so many ways to answer this question. If you can't know anything, because he has no justification for knowledge, 
He has no justification for reasoning because his reasoning is invalid, justifying his reasoning with his reasoning. So if you can't know anything, you can't say anything about me. Because for you to say anything about me would be making a knowledge claim that you say you can't know anything, right? So you, you can't say anything about me. Now, I've got more answers than this. But you get the idea. There is no way he can even get an argument against your worldview off of the ground if he can't even validate his reasoning. There's no way to do it. Look, there's a question mark there. He can't know anything. So what is he, what is he left with? Even when he's asking a question to the Christian, I say, well, the question you just asked, how do you know you asked that question? Did you have to employ your reasoning? And he has to say yes. And then I ask him, how do you validate your reasoning? And he has to use his reasoning to validate his reasoning. He's stuck in a logical fallacy of circular reasoning. And he can't get out. You know what he is? He's like this. Can I draw one? Can I draw one? Let me draw one. I'm not a good drawer, guys. Is drawer even a word? I don't know. A good, a good artist. I know you guys are going to enjoy my, my drawings here. I know you are. I guess that, I guess we can say, let me shade it in. Maybe you know, sometimes when you shade it in, it kind of fixes all your messy, your messy uh, art, artistry. How about that? Huh, what about that little ear? Put a little ear up there, right? Little ear, little nose, right there. He's like a hamster. He's like a hamster running in a wheel. Look, he's like a hamster running in a wheel and he can't get out. Right? Vicious circular reasoning. He's a hamster running in a wheel. He, he can never get out of there. And you know the only way out of this wheel, the only way out of circular reasoning, you ready for this? Not any God. The one true God. See, we're dealing in truth. And he's the one that manifests truth, not only to the Christian, but also to the lost person. But see, the lost person don't want to give God the glory for his knowledge. So what is he left in? When you don't give glory to God, you're left in absurdity. Amen. You're left in absurdity. And you're, you're like this hamster running in a wheel and you can't get out. I'm not saying you can't get out because there's not a way out. I'm saying you can't get out because you don't want to get out. Until you repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you'll never get out of that wheel. You can't know anything to be true. And now I'm saying this because nobody can have a logical argument against God. Nobody. This destroys the logical argument that anybody could possibly have against God. Because you can't even get logic off the ground until you start with God. That's how powerful this argument is. Look, you want to make a knowledge claim against God? You have to start with God in order to start a knowledge claim against him. That's how powerful this argument is. You can't know anything unless you start with God. So, let's continue on. I've got a few more things I can cover. 